हेलो माय लिटिल लर्नर्स आज हम क्लास सिक्स की साइंस टेक्स्ट बुक क्यूरियोसिटी का चैप्टर टू पढ़ेंगे डाइवर्सिटी इन द लिविंग वर्ल्ड बच्चों डू यू नो व्हाट डाइवर्सिटी मींस डाइवर्सिटी मींस वैरायटी सो डाइवर्सिटी इन द लिविंग वर्ल्ड मींस द वैरायटी ऑफ लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म फाउंड ऑन अर्थ फ्रॉम टाइनी बैक्टीरिया टू जॉइंट वेल्स फ्रॉम कलरफुल बटरफ्लाईज to tall green trees but remember kids this chapter is not just about reading from books it's about observing the world around you noticing life in every corner in the garden on trees in water even in the air since this is a long and interesting chapter we'll understand it in small parts so this is part 1 of our explanation series So let's begin this chapter with a beautiful shlok given at the start. Chaya manasya kurvanti tishthanti swayam apate phalanyapi padarthaya vriksha sat purusha ev. Isi shlok ko English mein bhi likha gaya hai. Trees stand in the sun and give shade to others. Their fruits are also for others. Likewise, good people bear all hardships. and bring welfare to others they give to others whatever they have earned ise saral artho mein samjhe to yahan kaha gaya hai ki ped khud dhoop mein khade rehte hain lekin dusron ko chhaya dete hain ve apne phal bhi khud nahi khate dusron ko hi dete hain isi tarah acche log bhi jo satpurush hote hain ve bhi pedon ki tarah hote hain ve khud kasht sahte hain lekin dusron ki bhalai karte hain अब आप खुद ही सोचिए एक पेड़ तेज धूप में खड़ा रहता है लेकिन आपको हमें ठंडी छाया देता है वो अपना फल उस पर जो भी हो अमरूद आम या सेब जो भी उगता हो वो खुद नहीं खाता वो भी हमें दे देता है ऐसे ही अच्छे लोग भी दूसरों की मदद करते हैं बिना किसी स्वार्थ के नाउ लेट्स रीड द चैप्टर सो इट इज अ प्लीजेंट मॉर्निंग आफ्टर यस्टरडेज रिफ्रेशिंग रेन Dr Raghu and Maniram Chacha have been invited to the school by the science teacher Madam Sulekha to facilitate an exciting nature walk. Dr Raghu is a scientist at the nearby research laboratory and Maniram Chacha is an elderly person from a nearby community. Maniram Chacha is an expert in mimicking bird calls. He is also brilliant at identifying a variety of plants and animals. So it is a beautiful morning after a nice rain the day before. Dr. Raghu and Maniram Chacha have come to school. They were invited by the science teacher Madam Sulekha for a fun nature walk. Dr. Raghu is a scientist from a nearby lab. Maniram Chacha is an elderly man from the village. He can copy bird sounds very well. and knows many plants and animals let's continue reading to prepare them for the nature walk dr raghu informs the students that the objective of this walk is to experience the beauty and variety of plants and animals in the nature the students are excited to join them they are curious to interact and learn from them The teacher advises the students to carry a notebook, a pen and a water bottle. So before starting the nature walk, Dr. Raghu tells the students that the main aim is to see and enjoy the beauty and variety of plants and animals around them. The students are very excited and eager to learn from Dr. Raghu and Maniram Chacha. Madam Sulekha, the teacher tells the students to bring a notebook pen and water bottle with them let's read further as they walk they begin exploring the plants and animals around them dr raghu advises the students to notice the variety of smells in the park and emphasizes respecting all living creatures and observing them without disturbing maniram chacha tells the students to not only observe different plants and animals but also to carefully listen to different sounds the students come across a variety of plants 
including grasses, bushes and large trees. They also observe a variety of birds sitting on the branches of trees, butterflies moving from flower to flower and monkeys jumping from one tree to another. They record their observations in their notebooks and discuss them with Dr. Raghu and Maniram Chacha. So the students walk through the park observing plants and animals. Dr. Raghu tells them to notice different smells and not disturb nature. Maniram Chacha asks them to listen to sounds too. They see grasses, bushes, trees, birds, butterflies and monkeys. Students write their observations and discuss them with the elders. Wow, it is amazing how each bird has its own unique chirp. The students can hear the chirping of birds. Dr. Raghu informs them that each bird has a unique chirp. This is an example of diversity in nature. Dr. Raghu requests Maniram Chacha to mimic calls of some birds. Maniram Chacha mimics different bird calls. The students enthusiastically start copying him. Have you ever observed different plants and animals around you? Share and discuss your observations with your friends and teacher. So the students hear bird chirping. Dr. Raghu tells them that every bird has its own special sound. This shows the diversity in nature. He asks Maniram Chacha to mimic bird calls. Maniram Chacha copies different bird sounds and the students happily try to copy him too. Now we'll study diversity in plants and animals around us. An activity is given here. Let us explore and record. So plan a nature walk with your teacher to a park or a nearby forest. While on the nature walk, observe different plants, insects, birds and other animals. Also note the weather conditions, whether it is hot, cold, windy and so on. You can collect different types of fallen leaves or flowers and create a scrapbook. Take care of the plants and animals in nature. Ensure that you do not disturb the plants and animals in the park. Do not pluck leaves and flowers. Record your observations in table 2.1 about the features of stems, leaves, flowers and anything interesting in various plants. Some examples have been given for you in figure 2.1 and table 2.1. So in figure 2.1 there are three pictures. The first one is grass. The second is Tulsi also called holy basil and the third is hibiscus which is commonly known as goodhal flower. These plants show diversity in their features. Grass has a thin stem and soft long leaves. Tulsi has broader leaves than grass. Hibiscus has the broadest leaves among the three. So in table 2.1, we observe different types of plants around us. Grass has a soft thin stem. Its long green leaves grow one by one on opposite sides. It has no flowers. Tulsi has a hard and thin stem. The leaves grow in opposite pairs. It has pinkish purple flowers. The leaves are aromatic and are used in medicine and worship. Hibiscus has a hard stem and broad leaves. It has large red or pink flowers, but they can be of many colors. Neem has a hard thick stem and small smooth leaves arranged in opposite pairs. It has small white flowers and is known for its medicinal uses. Mango tree has a hard thick stem and long leaves. It has small yellowish flowers, gives fruit and is a large tree that provides shade. So what similarities and differences did you find among the plants that you observed? You must have observed that plants have a variety of features such as tall or short, hard or soft stem, 
different shapes of leaves and their arrangements on the stem or branches flowers varying in color shape and scent now create a list of animals you observed during this walk or from your previous experiences record the places where they live the food they eat and the way they move around in table 2.2 some examples have been provided for you so table 2.2 helps us observe and understand the animals we see around us in our daily life crow lives on trees eats insects can fly and walk and was seen carrying a twig in its beak ant lives in nest in soil or burrows eats leaves seeds and small insects walks with its six legs and usually moves in a line cow lives on farms or sheds eats grass and leaves moves by walking on four legs and is a domestic animal that gives milk dog is found near homes or on streets eats bread biscuits or leftover food moves by running and walking and is often used to guard house so so this shows diversity in animals they live in different places eat different types of food and move in different let's move ahead what are the similarities and differences among the animals that you have observed and recorded in table 2.2 you would have observed that some animals live on land while some others live on trees birds live on trees fish live in water and some animals like frogs live on land as well as in water animals consume a diverse range of foods and exhibit a variety of movements sketch the plants and animals observed by you in your notebook or prepare a scrapbook with leaves flowers from different plants and feathers from animals write all the details you have gathered about them while traveling to and from school observe your surroundings and look out for a variety of plants and animals add the name of any plant or animal that you have not listed before in tables 2.1 and 2.2 here is another activity 2.2 let us appreciate close your eyes for 30 seconds and think of one plant and one animal that you have closely observed and appreciated very much Now each one of you can draw the plant and animal that you thought of on the blackboard what are your observations about the various plants and animals that have been drawn how many different plants and animals did the entire class draw on the blackboard do you think that there may be many more varieties of plants and animals other than those drawn on the board the variety of plants and animals found in a particular region contributes to the biodiversity of that region each member in the biodiversity of a region has a different role to play for example trees provide food and shelter to some birds and other animals animals help in spreading seeds after eating fruits and so on can you think of more such examples this shows that plants and animals are dependent on each other so in this activity students think of one plant and one animal they like and draw them on the blackboard then they observe how many different kinds of plants and animals the class has drawn this shows that there is a lot of variety in living things which is called biodiversity every plant and animal has a special role 
Trees give food and shelter to animals and birds. Animals help in spreading seeds after eating fruits. This means plants and animals depend on each other to live and grow. Now students, we will read 2.2 section. How to group plants and animals. How would you arrange your books and notebooks in groups? Would arranging them in groups help you better organize your school bag? Now let us look at the world around us. We are surrounded by a variety of plants and animals with different features about which you have learned in section 2.1. We can group them based on similarities and differences among them. So just like you arrange books in your bag to keep them organized, we can also group plants and animals based on their similarities and differences. Here is another activity 2.3. Let us group. Collect pictures of various other plants and animals. Cut their pictures from old magazines, newspapers, charts and other sources. Paste each of these pictures on a different card. Divide your class in group of 5 to 6 students each. Pull the cards prepared by the students in your group. Observe various features of plants and animals shown on the cards. Recall the features of plants and animals that you have listed in table 2.1 and 2.2. Group them on the basis of common features. Share and discuss the basis of grouping you have made with other groups in your class. You will be surprised to see that the basis used by different groups may vary. What do you think are the reasons behind it? Different students might have chosen different common features for the grouping. For example, some students may have chosen the height of plants as the basis for grouping while others might have chosen presence or absence of flowers as the basis for grouping of plants. Some possible criteria of groupings of plants and animals may be presence or absence of flowers, hard or soft stem, eating habits, place they live. You may have grouped animals based on varied features such as what they eat, where they live, what color they are and how they move. What is the importance of grouping? Grouping makes it easier to understand and study plants and animals on the basis of their similarities and differences. You will learn more about the importance of grouping in our daily lives in the chapter. Materials are here is. So what we learn here is there are many ways to group living things. Grouping helps us to understand, compare and study plants and animals easily. And different groups may use different features and that's totally okay. That's it for today's students. We will continue this chapter in part 2 where we will learn more about how to group plants and animals. Until then, bye-bye.